Hey guys, this is KSP with Tape, and today you join me for something a little different. Although, considering how much SpaceX stuff I do on my channel, it's basically a series. But, um, yeah, I say it's different because it's not one of my current series. But this is the Dragon V2 atop the, um, Falcon 1.1, the SpaceX rocket. Um, basically, if you don't know, uh, Google it, because SpaceX has so much cool stuff, and they have a YouTube channel. Basically, they're a private space company who launch commercial satellites and do stuff for the International Space Station. And this is their kind of more concept than actual use, but they have built one of these, and this pod is called the Dragon V2. Um, it is made to take seven people to orbit and land propulsively and awesomely, and I'll demonstrate that a bit in um, the episode today. Um, the first thing I want to show off, actually, is uh, the abort system, which is very cool. There is no abort tower. But if I launch, um, say, kind of a logical velocity, that sort of thing. Yeah, there we go. And then I'm like, oh god, something's gone wrong, which it hasn't, but say it had. I'm like, I can punch out. And using its own engines, which it uses for landing, um, it, uh, it can escape from the rocket and then land propulsively. Um, so yeah, I just basically go down. I don't think I brought all my fuel with me or something. I don't know if that's something with the mod. Um, the people who make this mod are Laztec or Laztec. They make some very nice looking mods. Um, I don't know where that will have gone, but I'll probably bomb Russia or Korea or something. Um, because that'll start a world war. Um, this is basically an intercontinental ballistic missile. Um, not intending to bomb those countries, it's probably just my luck. I'd start a world war. Anyway, yeah, so this is how it's designed to land. You're, you you know, ignite your engines, and you don't use parachutes, because why bother? Although you can use parachutes, it does have one if the engines fail. But anyway, let's actually get to a proper launch. Revert to launch. Hopefully it won't take too long to load. Um, yeah, for some reason, I, it hasn't packed all its fuel. I don't need all the fuel, but it would be nice to have it. Um, yeah, it should have, like, 800 units more fuel. I won't bother putting it in, because I've tested it without that. But still, that's kind of annoying. Alright, throttle up, let's go to space. Um, this is designed to be a reusable rocket. Um, it is the thing they use in real life. Um, the, uh, um, what was I going to say? The, the, the rocket, car the, well, the main stage of the rocket in real life does what it, this does here. It carries these landing legs, um, which uh, come out on landing because most rockets burn up on re-entry and aren't reused. But this is intended, it hasn't been reused yet, but it has soft landed on the ocean twice. And they're planning to eventually soft land it on land. Um, I am pointing the wrong way. Let's roll this around again. Why is... just... why even? What was that? I think I just got a Gmail. My um, phone will have gone off. It's really annoying me how much that goes off in videos now. And I mute Facebook and make sure no one's going to text me. And then Gmail comes out of nowhere. Jesus. Um, anyway, let's stop talking about that. Yeah, and on this, the top stage also has landing legs and can be reused, but it isn't in uh, real life yet. Um, I'm not going to reuse the rocket in this episode. I have actually done another video, which will probably be... I'll put a link on screen now, um, if I remember. If not, it might be at the end, because I'm going to make end plates for my videos. Um, but yeah, that demonstrates reusability. Or um, SpaceX actually has their own video of the real one being reused. I implore you to go and check out SpaceX. Um, they do some seriously cool stuff, and there is a video of them landing a stage on the ocean. Um, yeah, and then, because, yeah, I talk about reusable rockets so much that, you know, um, basically the point is that it'll be a lot cheaper, because you, if you throw away your Boeing 747 every time you were, you know, you know, every time you wanted to fly somewhere, no one would be able to afford to fly, because, I mean, come on. Um... Yeah, this is uh, quite a nice mod. I I was going to do this earlier, but when I looked it up, uh, when I looked it up uh, about a month ago, they didn't have the mod. But now it uh, is, it's fully fledged, and there's all the stuff. And oh god, the mod is very good. It has lots of um, explorey stuff. And this is a way overpowered rocket for what it's supposed to do. It's more powerful than it would be in real life. I think that's mainly for the aesthetics. Um, I'll show you these landing legs real quick. Um, you, they deploy like this. Um, I have done a video on it. Oh, and the other ones have stuck out. Yeah. Anyway, I'll ditch that stage as if it were going to land. Although, not that it would... That's something. Um, even without the landing legs deployed, it has a serious tendency to get all stuck. 
Um, 80 kilometers, that'll do nicely. Uh, <laughs> this is a poor launch. Um, I'm doing live commentary, so, you know, all of my commentary will not be great. But yeah, basically what um, the first stage would do is it would redirect itself with um, an engine burn. It would fly back, because you can fly something, because it w you can fly something without wings, because it has an off-center center of mass, so you can just fly it. Um, you fly it back to Cape Canaveral, and then you land it um, somewhere safe, or on a floating platform. Um, this has too much torque, that's something I don't like about a lot of these mods, is they put far too much torque into their, um, into their, uh, their, their vehicles. Um, and it just makes it annoying to control. This, yeah, this engine has 420 kilonewtons of thrust and is the, um, what is it, Merlin engine, yeah, the vacuum version. The other ones, in real life, they have about 800 newtons of thrust, but, you know, scaled down for Kerbal Space Program. Um, yeah, and I think, uh, yeah, this here with the solar panels on it, that is the trunk where you take non-pressurized cargo to, say, the International Space Station is what they do in real life. Um, because sometimes you don't need pressurized cargo, but you can put pressurized cargo inside the main capsule, which they do on the Dragon version 1, which oh, I, did, I, I assume I did a video on it ages ago. My first videos were SpaceX related. Anyway, we're in orbit. They were terrible, don't watch them. Um, uh, yeah, so we're in space. Everything's cool. Um, I'm going to... Ah, we're still in the daylight. I still have time. It has full RCS control. Um, slightly odd. Oh, CS control. It's because it's not really. It's made to be more kind of um, like it would be in real life because they only need to do very precise burns. Um, so, I mean, yeah, it kind of fires out off center, but I do really like how it looks. So it has this maneuvering in space system. And then it also has these engines which burn monopropellant. Um, I'll ignite them. These are the. Oh, what are they called? Draco engines. These are the Super Dracos. These little RCS ports are called the Draco engines. These are called the Super Dracos, and they provide a lot of thrust. Those are the things you saw in the launch abort system. They are used for maneuvering around in orbit and for landing. So, we should probably go in for a landing. Um, hmm, hopefully get it on land. I could go for the space center, or I could go for the biggest landmass, which might be smarter. Um, I'll go for the space center. Oh, and it has, this mod has some nice lights. Oh, and it has a really nice cockpit. Um, I'll show you the cockpit interior. Um, yeah, you can see here it has these screens. This is kind of quite what it looks like in real life. I do like the Dragon version too, because it has... Um, it doesn't look like all blocky, spaceshipy stuff, all terrible, not really computers. This all looks really real. Although this is just like um, the stock thing, because you need that. And there's a picture of Falcon Heavy, just randomly. Some guys back at home, where apparently we're still at launch data standby, which sucks, um, because we've already launched. I think it are, they are just static images, but still, they're a nice addition. Um, these are the solar panels on the trunk. Um, on the Dragon version 1, they have articulating solar panels, the one that turned to face the sunlight. Um, but I assume they just were like, let's not have moving parts, because I think they've had problems with the solar panels on V1 in the past. So they were like, eh, why have that problem again? Hmm. To just deorbit. I think I'm not an expert on this. I usually play with Ferrum Aerospace, so this will probably go horribly wrong. But I believe if you put your periaps at around 30 kilometers there, you'll come back at the space center. I have a lot of junk in the space center, um, and a person who I've just left there because he's uh, he's just our groundskeeper. You know, he's just doing lots of stuff. This is, I think, an incredibly old save. It's uh, my like Area 51, which is my test save but it's on my oldest save file, which is the actual Steam one, which I haven't copied into other places. Um, because I have like loads of versions of the game, so I don't have to keep changing mods. Another thing is I like how sleek it looks. I wish I'd kept that trunk to talk about this. The thing with Dragon version 2 is it looks really nice and sleek. I mean, it doesn't look like a boring old Soyuz. It looks like a proper spaceship. It, because like they said, they built Dragon V1 because they didn't really know how to build a spaceship or a pod or whatever. So they just kind of copied what had been done before. But with V2, this is like serious stuff. It has landing legs, which you will see in a bit. Or you kind of did see when I aborted. Um, I might do, um, if there's, I might do a 
fully a uh, full reusability demonstration. Although I have kind of done it in the past, but I reckon I could do a better version of it now um, because I'm generally better at the game. Oh, I pulled the parachute. Um, how do I deactivate that? I don't want that. Um, I'll just cut it. You do have a parachute on Dragon V2 because if the um, engines fail, you might as well pull it, which is nice. Oh, and I didn't show you this thing. Um, if you open this cone, which is, this is how it works in real life, you open that up and there's a docking port. That is the standard docking port in Curl Space Program, so you can use this pod. Um, the, mod, the link for the mod will be in the description. Um, worry not. Uh, close that up for re-entry. Um, it does have a nice looking heat shield. In real life, this heat shield can be reused because this is all built to be a reusable rocket. It's a reusable pod, it's a reusable rocket, it's a reusable heat shield, which is on the pod, so you know. Um, although, yeah, I think, I reckon by the end of this year, they'll have maybe landed a first stage on land. But even that, I mean, that cuts, if you can reuse that again, it'll be, take a while till they can actually reuse it, even when they do land it on land, because of various problems, not least... Um, people thinking, people who are launching their satellites and probably still having to pay full cost because it's experimental being like, well, I don't want to use an expended rocket. Um, but someone will and then everything will be fine. But yeah, if you can reuse the first stage, that takes away about 70% of the cost because you just have to pay for a propellant on that. But then if you can reuse the second stage, that takes away a lot of the cost. You probably play about 1% of the price. So, you know, it's that's how we're going to go to Mars. That's what that's what's in my head. Um, yeah, and it would be nice to land in something looking this sleek, um, sleek and cool with these little windows. I just like how it looks. It's like, oh hey, you know all those other spaceships? We did it better. Look how nice ours looks. It takes seven people to orbit. Um, I think if they actually do, uh, I think um, well, what NASA are doing right now is looking for a commercial partner to take astronauts to the station. Oh, we are going to come down on land. Um, and this can take seven, not that you ever really need to take seven people to a space station. Although that would mean you could use this to abort everyone on the space station, because there's only six people there. So if all the Soyuz has failed, they could be like, hmm, just climb and dragon. And it's cool because it's called a dragon. It's not like Soyuz or like some boring Greek god, it's like dragon. And the um, rocket is named after the Millennium Falcon. Not just the bird. The no, oh, cut the shoots. I don't want them. Uh, also, they shouldn't deploy this high. How do I cut the chutes? Nope, fuck you chutes, we're landing propulsively. I hope, because I just cut the chutes. Yeah, you can land on chutes. Um, I reckon about here, they would do a test fire of the rockets um, after re-entry. Um, if they didn't work, you pull the chute. If they do work, great, land. Um, and they have four. I think you can use, basically in real life this is, I think uh, each of these is four engines. Um, no, there's four, there are four engines. Each of these engines is two, like, little engines. You can lose two of them, I think, and still land, because it can produce five... Yeah, I think you can lose two of these full things and still land, because it produces five Gs of deceleration. Or acceleration, same thing. Um, there we go, the engines are working, so we will cruise in to this mountain. Bad place to land. Um, how high are we above this surface? No, I'm not sure. It, we're still traveling. We'll probably be getting much lower down soon. Where's the sun? We'll need the shadow to land. I should have put mech gem on this, really, but um, I'll land it by myself. I might as well. I'll deploy the landing legs. Look how cool they look. Sleek. Okay, how high are we above the ground? 500 meters. Let's throttle up. Yeah, that's 4 Gs of deceleration. Obviously, you wouldn't actually do that with humans, because that would be incredibly uncomfortable. And... We can land. And you do have a lot of Delta V. Ooh, 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 ooh. I'm not sure how much Delta V it has in real life. Obviously enough to land and move around in space, but um, I'm not sure about the mod. You could probably look it up. Or just hey, be like, hey, Mech Jeb, tell me. Um, or Flight Engineer, or whatever you use. Or do the calculation yourself, if you're really smart. Um, or know how to do an equation. Anyway, touchdown on a mountain. <laughs> Pretty rough, but that is nice. Um, haven't tried getting out yet. Uh, yeah, just, that's how you get out. Um, so that is the, uh, Dragon V2 mod. If you people want, um, me to do a pro proper reusability demonstration, because I could do one now and it would probably be quite good, because my last one was kind of crap. Um, 
Yeah, I can do that if everyone, if anyone wants that. Uh, I kind of want a docking port light on. I'm just going to click through all these, show you everything else. Um, yeah, so I could, I could do that. Um, there's no docking port light. What the crap? Um, yeah. So, you know, tell me what you think about that. Um, anyway, I'll stop messing around with that. Um, the link for this will be in the description. Um, yeah, this has been Caspi with Tape. I will see you next time.